Hi you guys, this is Rachel Kirkland here, the Modern Shaman. Thanks for being with me for another weekly video on the YouTube channel. If you're new to this channel, I am glad you're here. And as always, I would love to invite you to go to the website, which is themodernshaman.net, just for further resources. So I've been doing Facebook Lives for years. <laughs> and um, since like they first since live first became a thing y'all remember that when it was like oh live facebook live is like a new feature anyways i started doing those every other friday and uh, this one came in and i didn't have time to get to it so it went in the queue to be answered on a youtube video and here it is rachel can you speak about the female body what is happening when she is menstruating energetically can you speak on first periods in young girls rites of passage, movements and women's cycles, men's cycles on the planet, and how these affect the planet. Okay, so this is a huge topic. I loved it. I started into this topic on the live stream, but like I said, I had like five minutes to spare, and so I was like, ah, I'm going to get into this further because there were so many people that were chiming in on the live stream like, ooh, yeah, I was going to ask about that, and ooh, I would love to know about that. So there was a lot of collective energy and buzz around this question, which often happens on the live stream, if you've ever been on those live streams, where somebody literally asks the question you desire, just a sense of law of attraction and answering in that resonant energy, which is beautiful. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take kind of the first part of this question because it's big and deep and there's a lot that can be said about it and I love it. And so I'm going to take it bit by bit. What is hap So I'm going to take the first part. Speaking about the female body and what is happening when she is menstruating uh, energetically. So the first thing I want to say is that this video is not just for women, okay? If you are a male, first of all, men still have cycles. Okay, if you have um, physiological male gender identifiers as well as male hormones as the dominant force in your hormonal body or system, then you still have cycles and they are still associated with the lunar cycle and they still impact and shift your hormones. Okay. And so the cycles will still impact you and you will still have similar mirrored experiences in terms of um, the lunar phases and how those play out in your personal life. Now, if you are on this ascension path and you have been working on aligning your chakras, um, working on a very kind of active or devoted path of developing your energetic body and clearing and cleaning and uh, amplifying your own vibration, then oftentimes you will activate your higher level chakra system, which is inclusive of the divine feminine and the divine masculine, okay? The divine feminine, if you have taken any of my courses on the 13 level chakra system, when you get into the 13 level chakra system beyond the traditional seven, it moves into our auric body, our auric field. And uh, it's not just internal of the body, it's inclusive of our auric body and our energetic form. And those two chakras uh, counterbalance one another and they sit right on top of the head, almost like antennas, okay? The divine feminine's over here on the left, the divine masculine sits up here on top and they feed into the crown. And oftentimes, when these are active, then these cycles for the man, the man and the woman will take on a whole nother level of potency. So all that being said, if you are a male and you're on your ascension path, you will feel the impact of the divine feminine menstrual cycle, lunar cycle, uh, phases of your moon cycle just as much as you will feel the masculine and the same is true in the flip because these are counterbalance your energies meaning if you are female you will also feel the lunar impact of the cycle of the divine masculine and the uh, protector energy and all of these things will come through as well 
So nobody escapes this video, all right? All that, be <laughs> all that is coming down to the point that this video is relevant for everyone here, all right? And even if you do not claim a sense of gender or do not associate with one, the ebb and the flow of being on this planet that moves things into a polaric experience of um, yin and yang, uh, dark and light, these experience and translate through and have interaction with our lunar cycles, our planets, our astrology, what we are born into, what we transcend, what we transmute, and so it's all relevant, okay? It's all for you. The information is good, so <laughs> that's my way of saying everybody listen up is relevant, okay? Nobody is immune or excused from the conversation, even when we talk about things that feel particular, particularly feminine like menstruation. Okay, let's move on. Second thing I want to touch on is that uh, first question where you said, what is happening energetically during the menstruation cycle? This is a life and death cycle and it is a miniature cycle of our life, of our process of creating life, creation, and then dying off. Now we see this in nature. Um, when we think of our annual cycles, our cycles of fall and wintering, and the same can be used in explanation of our menstrual cycle. It is a creation and a death cycle. And remember, in the native communities, death does not have, there's no fear attached to it. There's no, uh, it's, it's highly honored and highly respected and highly, uh, like it's a sacred, sacred time in someone's life when they are nearing the end. And the same is true if we shrink that down into a menstrual cycle with women. It is when the ovulation occurs. So maybe I should talk about the cycle itself, right? If you're unfamiliar with the cycle. So the egg drops in our bodies, which is preparing women to be able to um, create a child. And this is the creation connection. And this is often associated with spring, okay? And this is a highly powerful creative time. And this energetically, a lot of times, is associated with power, uh, with potency, with um, strength to kind of have that extroversion. This is a highly sensual time. So we think very sensory. Uh, and, and creation comes out of that, meaning I want to create, I want to make something, I want to. Um, have a sense of extrovertive energy to create something new. And it's a very powerful time in a woman's cycle. Now remember, this is also found in men, in your own lunar cycle, okay? So don't, just because I'm using this as an example, don't negate the fact that this occurs in men's lives and in a monthly cycle for men. And they will have to kind of watch their own sense of power of when they feel like going out and getting things done and making things happen and when they're most um, able to do that, when they literally feel like they have the most power and um, potency to connect and to make things happen. And then we go into kind of what is considered the summer phase, which is when is the gestation, when things um, take and they start creating the baby. So this is once the ideas have kind of been set and grounded, and then we begin to develop them. So this is where some of the, the things start kind of um, mulling over in our mind. This is a contemplative space, but it's a beautiful space, and a lot of women feel um, energetically empowered to connect with others, to kind of take things deeper. So it's not the beginning birthing phase, it's more the developmental phase energetically in our lives. And this uh, creates a desire for intimate connection, for a sense of truly having conversations that mean something, that drive relationships deeper. We get the juice out of it in that gestation period where we're creating something that feels like it has more roots to it, it has depth and has harmony, we're coming together with others um, or in projects and, and um, a lot of times also in that ovulation period, 
if you are a healer, you feel very drawn to your capabilities to heal during that time. You feel like you're energetically on fire. And then that gestation period or that summer phase of the time between ovulation and menstruation is when we uh, begin to really create a lasting sense of sustainability in that healing. And this is the energetic kind of sustenance of feeding what we have healed and creating a new foundation for that life. So these are uh, practices and patterns that we put into place as a healer or uh, as a light worker that feel like they sustain the life that we just created. And this is a powerful time to use that sustainability and re-regulation and reassimilation to ground everything that we just uh, healed, that we just brought into life in our kind of ovulation and spring phase. Then we move into kind of the later phase of that, which is right before PMS, <laughs> the premenstrual time period, when things start to shift and they begin, for some people, the, the shifting feels volatile. So this can be emotionally jarring if, um, if, if it's particularly hormonally intense, if you range high on your home hormonal impact. And this is where fall comes into play. And this is where um, instead of spring in the blooming, things start to shrink, they start to feel sometimes depressing, they start to feel bleak. Um, we don't feel like we get as much sustenance from things around or we don't want to be around those things that we were around before. And there's a little bit of a rejection of what once pleased and now doesn't because the, the phase itself is cycling through and we're moving into that fall phase. And this is essentially transition, transition time, but not everybody is cool with change. <laughs> and so our lunar cycle is, it can be abrasive to some people during that time. Again, men go through this as well. And kind of it's that ornery time. It's that time where um, the gears begin shifting. And so if we are not conscientious with our own process, if we don't give ourselves enough compassion and leniency and privacy, then the relationships start to feel like they are um, frictional during that time of change. And then we move into the menstruation, which is known as the wintering. And this is the sloughing off, the dying off of all of the skin, the dying off of the blood. This is when we bleed and we uh, release all that no longer is helpful or needed in the body. Now you can see how that would compare energetically to the same process that we would live out in our lives. So this is where we begin to get very deeply introverted uh, of what is protective over us, what we feel like we truly need, what we don't need, uh, the clarity of that vision played out and now um, it, it's either come to fruition or it's finished or we're done with that and we need to move on. There is a, a part of that process that also the death time, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is highly sacred. And uh, the time of menstruation, the time of actual bleeding, of the, out, of the inside coming outside, this is a very, very sacred time of transformation and transmutation where we clean naturally our insides all the way out in full release of the body. And this for men can seem kind of like um, an extreme sense of wanting, wanting to uh, be angry. Sometimes, you know, men's easiest, at least when they're younger, the easiest emotion of acceptable, <laughs> acceptable um, male trigger is typically to emote through anger. So a lot of times they'll get that surges in testosterone or surges in anger. It's a strong release time or a strong cry if they're, if they're uh, older in age and their testosterone is less in terms of just like numerical data and they don't have as much testosterone in their body, then they tend to cry more easily. And, and that releases a deep purging through the men's cycle. Women do the same thing. We feel very introverted and protective over ourselves and then we want to release very deeply our body, our emotional state. And the power through this is extremely potent because like I said, it moves you. It's a transformation cycle. Meaning when we come back around the next time, it is a completely new life, a new birth that is available in the next lunar cycle. and. Sometimes when this is coupled with different things in our lives, 
it can um, be used with a sense of precision and wisdom and knowledge to fully step out and step into something new with with a new skin just like snakes release that skin and move into a completely new body the same sense of transformation is available through the menstruation cycle when we completely let go of what is inside of us and have that cleansing into something new so the power there and 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 this this was a highly highly regarded time if you look at lots of ancient traditions and the native communities um, women during their menstruation it was very very respected and honored and a sacred time the same with death and the rituals associated with death and menstruation is a smaller cycle of the life and death cycle so it is incredibly important and heralded as such and valued in fact it kind of brings me to your next question i'll just go into that next the rites of passage that you brought up like first periods and girls and rites of passage this is one of my favorite times um and maybe it just has some in my heart as a mother but even as an individual when we move in in the native communities um the first menstruation is celebrated. It is not hidden. It is celebrated. Typically a four-day celebration with uh, feasting and ritual dancing and special foods and uh, everybody comes out and then they have the running, you know, you dance all night and then they're exhausted and then they run, 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 and uh, race basically like to extend the self to a point of exhaustion they come back and then they celebrate so it's an incredible um honoring and i guess just just noting that this is a time of womanhood or manhood and we connect that to like the vision quest in a man moving into manhood which is typically done when they are in puberty and taking on their sense of uh, age of accountability. This is something that I feel like is really missing from our current tradition. I would love to see it come back. I'm doing it in my children just personally <laughs> and I would challenge you to do the same if you feel called to but essentially we don't have a lot of accountability or rituals or ceremonies about the age of accountability where our youth take on a sense of responsibility as individuals, as important members of society. And I think that's why so many children, when they become adults and they're in that mid-range, you know, 16 to 18, they almost feel kind of listless and aimless and like, I don't have a purpose. And they're, they're kind of loafing around, floating around. And, and, and you'll hear a lot of adults say um, that they're just not accountable, you know, for anything or, um, that there's just a lot of excuses and kind of like pandering. And this was not the case in our native communities. These rites of passage, whether they were done for the women when they had their first menstruation or whether they were done for the men when they came into puberty, and they would go on these, um, basically these time periods of where the adults said, this is now your age of accountability. You are associated as a mature adult and expected to act as such. You have the responsibility now to stand in who you are and the impact of the choices that you make now will impact our tribe. They will impact, you will have a voice now. You will be a voting member of our tribe, of our society. You are welcome now into the meetings. These are these were important kind of transference of responsibility and accountability to like, what you do now matters to all of us. And you are no longer a child and an individual in your choices. You are part of community. You are part of tribe. You are part of family. And every choice you make will have a larger impact and the responsibility is now yours, as it has been mine. And this is when, when um, the men went on their vision quest, and they fasted, and they cried out, and they prayed for a vision of their life. Give me my purpose. What is my role here in the tribe? 
What is my role here in this earth? And I think so many people are looking for this now. They desire it, but a lot of our culture has kind of like whitewashed it out and is missing that sense of ceremonial age of accountability. So I love that you asked this. Um, one of the, the things that um, I put into place when my boys were little, I think they were around one or two, is um, preparing for this. And this as a parent is a, is a big ceremony. It's kind of like preparing for a wedding, <laughs> you know? You, you, there's the ceremony, there's the point of like what you're doing, but there's a lot of preparation around it. And as a parent, let me show you because I got this out. Uh, part of the rites of passage is the transference of energy and the transference of wisdom of the ancestors. And when my kids were babies, this is one. This is my eldest son's wisdom box of his ancestors that he'll get to see when he goes on his vision quest when he's 16. It doesn't have to be that he's 16, but essentially when I feel that he's matured enough, to come into his age of responsibility. All of these are letters from his ancestors passing on wisdom. And I asked them to do this. I sent out a letter when he was like two. And um, I asked everyone to send in wisdom that they felt like he needed to hear uh, when he matured and was able to receive his new name. This is another part of the process of phases that the ancient community or native community is well aware of, is that our life and a, and a cycle of life, and so much of nature, we're aware of cycles, and then we miss this in our human 3D society. It's like everything feels linear. In the native community, everything is cyclical, and there's cycles, and they repeat, and we grow, and the phases help build on each other, and are cumulative. If you look at a totem pole, right, we have the animal representation of the different phases in our life. And the phases that we go through, one of which is a changing of name, when um, a vision quest is, is fulfilled, when a maturing and a taking on of personal responsibility happens. So I planned this into my children's middle names, but you don't have to do that with the middle names, but essentially their middle names uh, are native names and they will take on their middle name when they take on their age of accountability, when they move through their vision quest. During that process of their vision quest, their time out alone with God to develop their sense of purpose and personhood and new identity of accountability. Uh, they will receive that box with all of their wisdom from their ancestors. A lot of those people have passed on now, are not even alive any longer, but those are very, very cherished letters and um, sealed, so I haven't read them. Uh, anyone that contributed from the ancestors and, and family and godparents and things like that. They'll receive that, they'll take on their new name, and um, they will have that devoted time of truly contemplating what is my sense of vision for my life, what do I want my purpose to be, and asking God to speak to them in that mystical way. This is also missing from a lot of young people and so this is, I feel like, why, why they go towards drugs and psychotropic experiences because they're looking for a mystical experience that has a personal impact. This is known in the native community of something that where, where God, where spirit speaks to you alone and says, your life has a purpose and this is what it is right now. And then the individual stands in that, takes a new name, a new identity, the power of the naming ceremony. This also as a rite of passage, taking on a level, like I said, of responsibility. This is not a, it's not a game that we play at this mystical experience where it's like a drug and we play at it and we laugh and we have these crazy experiences. This is a life transforming vision for you that you stand in as a new name, a new identity, a new sense of responsibility in your life. And the level of attention given to that by the elders or the community or the tribe around you, your family, those that support your quest. And then from there, going out and living that. 
even in small or big ways. These are highly personal things that are held in the heart and the soul of the individual. And then once they move into their life, they begin to incorporate whatever that vision was for their life. Um, it doesn't mean that, you know, I mean, it can be anything. Like a spirit can show you anything during that vision and that post-processing of that time. Ah, this video is getting long, a lot to say about it. I'm gonna stop there. I, I wanna say, I guess I'm not gonna stop there. You know me, I could talk and talk. Um, I want to say that that vision quest, although it was traditionally male, is not just done for males. I'm doing that for my daughter as well. And it can be, I love this, this is part of why I call myself the modern shaman. As we move through modern times and, and kind of this um, taking on of the unified body of divine masculine and divine feminine and not splitting the polarity of male and female, and yet uniting the two. This is part of the beauty of that, is that the woman in their highly intuitive state during that time of menstruation, which is associated with death, this is the thinnest veil from the mystical, from the beyond, right? Right where you are at the precipice of death. And our bleeding time during our menstruation is known as the same as the death point, the exit point, the, al the alternative option of the thinning of the veils to where we are so, so able, and this is true with the same, the thinning of the uterine, uterine lining, where we are bleeding everything out until it is so thin and we are highly intuitively connected during this time. Now this is same with the time period where we are able to use the vision quest with the men. We are able to blend these ceremonies and these times for our children to say, this rite of passage begins at in a new emotional state for you, a new life cycle for you, a new awareness of your own lunar patterns. And this is important as adults to teach ourselves this, to learn our own lunar menstrual, I say lunar cycles because it's associated with the menstrual cycle, to learn our own lunar cycles of when we are in spring, in fall and wintering, and to amplify the power or the use of that time. And then to make sure we educate our children when they move into their own rite of passage of puberty, of learning their own lunar cycle. Because if we don't learn it, and most of the times we don't, we're not taught this. If we don't learn it, then we think we're going crazy. We think there's something wrong with our depression, or we think there's something wrong with our bursts of testosterone or estrogen, or we think there's there's something wrong with me. And uh, this this whole like you know I don't fit in. I don't. This is part of the sense of uh, life and death cycle, and it's so important to instruct our children during that process, and then empower them to know themselves and to know their own vision when they start out in their own life path. Uh, and again, it is just, it is a phase, meaning they will change and they will grow and they will continue to evolve. But that time period is a very, very important time period. I didn't get to the second part of your question on like the movement in these cycles and the movement of the cycles on the planet. So that deserves another video. We're already at 30 minutes. So I'm gonna have to cut it. <laughs> It's a long one today. Okay, I'm going to sign off. I'm sending you guys blessings. We'll be back here next week.